Endoscopic sinus surgery is a common procedure whose success and safety depends on a surgical field that provides adequate visualization. A hypotensive anesthetic technique has demonstrated efficacy in achieving this goal. However, the surgeon does not always have access to this anesthetic option. There are several measures that can be done to help optimize the surgical conditions other than the type of anesthesia. The first is placing the patient in a reverse Trendelenburg position. Studies have shown that with consistent anesthetic technique and vasoconstriction use, the reverse Trendelenburg position decreases blood loss when compared to the horizontal patient position. In addition, at an angle of up to 30 degrees, there is no associated cerebral hypoperfusion. The second measure is pretreatment with oral steroids. Studies have demonstrated a decrease in blood loss with poly patients, an improved surgical field, and a shorter operative time. Lastly, vasoconstrictive agents, more specifically topical epinephrine at a concentration of 1 to 1,000, have helped control intraoperative bleeding. A systematic review of the literature in 2011 created guidelines for the use of topical vasoconstriction in endoscopic sinus surgery. Their recommendations were, one, to avoid the use of topical cocaine due to its associated ca cardiovascular side effects. Two, the use of topical oxymetazoline in pediatric patients up to the age of 12 years old. Three, for ages 12 to 17 years, either oxymetazoline or topical epinephrine at a concentration of one to 2,000 can be used. And four, adults ages 18 years of age and older should use topical epinephrine at a concentration of one to 1,000. Lastly, topical epinephrine should not be used in the setting of patients with cardiovascular disease. Incorporating these measures will help improve surgical conditions during sinus surgery. And in the literature, all have been associated with decreased blood loss when incorporated to the treatment.